So if announced, we also have to look into are there any structures on Repticus that we could use for speeding things up. So one we've seen for fine field discrete logs that you can use this index characters attack. Um, for elliptic curves, there has been lots of attempts and none of them has worked. So if you're interested in this, you can look up the Zeton calculus or you can look up the height function. And if you're looking into lifting a elliptic curve from FP to an elliptic curve with the integers, one problem is that most of the points which we're seeing over FP do not have analogous solutions of the integers. So there are just no points. And even if you go for Q rather than integers, those points don't exist. So finding curves with those points and then relating the discrete logs hasn't so far succeeded. So what other structures are there? Well, there is something which is not quite generic. So if you're on an elliptic curve, then you have, say for Weierstrass curve, that both the point and its negative share the same x coordinate. Now I was saying before when we defined the walk that you could make the walk depend on the x coordinate. So remember we did this this additive walk in the DL4 lecture uh, where we introduced how Paul's role would be working. We take just the point where we currently are in our walk, we look at where are we, we take the x coordinate of this point and then make the next step. Now actually both w and minus w have the same x coordinate, so they will be taking the same step, but if it's an additive walk, if you're starting at w and you take it plus some point, you're going this way, whereas if you're starting at minus w and adding a point, you go in a different, the same point, you go in a different way. So even though we have already made the walk depend on the x coordinate only, these are not identified. But since we are paying for the size of the search space in order to get a collision, well, the search space is the whole group order, so that's L. We could actually half the search space, so L divided by 2, by identifying a point with its negative. So that should just give us a factor of square root of 2 speed up. So, of course, that means that our walk has to be compatible. We're now identifying two points. So the next point, Wi, given to Wi plus 1, it shouldn't matter whether we had plus w or at minus w. So the walk function has to be such that the next step, so wi plus 1, is the same no matter when, which one we came from. Okay, well, that doesn't seem so hard to do. I mean, we just do basically, well, you're taking the point and you're defining some form of, well, let's correct minimum would be the typical thing. So you're picking an absolute value of this point. You're either picking w or minus w and, okay, if you can solve the discrete log problem for one, you also can solve it for the other one. So that's not a problem to then move to the other curve. So let's define the absolute value as saying, well, we're taking the x comma y, where y is the liquid lexicographically smaller of y and minus y. And then the work will be defined, well, first of all, we're making the Next step, this j depend only on the point. That is what we have be doing anyway. We take the x coordinate, but then also the step function that takes this absolute value of w. And that means, depending on whether you are at the lexicographically smaller one or it's negative, we're actually moving over to the other point. Well, we're not taking it moving over because we're considering them as the same point. We're comp computing on the set of points up to negation. But when you're looking at representation of points, we have to take the absolute value. Okay, and so at that point, yes, we are really identifying and our walk is defined on classes of points. So this speed up, so that you're getting effect of square root of 2, um, is basically textbook material. So this means if you want to have uh, 2 to the 128 for the attacker, well, you would basically have to go to 257, except for there's all these fudge factors like the, the pi over 2, so it's not exactly those numbers anyway. But you're getting a bit of a speed up um, from this, so that's half, the, well, it's a square root of 2, so kind of half a bit on the cost of the attack, or one bit on the size of the group. However, there are some problems. Remember that we had this, this map where we are walking around with our little figure and we're doing steps now that depend on the absolute value. So let's look at one typical case. Let's assume 
out of our, our different choices that the WI and the WI plus one point select the same point, like the same, same step, so that the hash of this point is the same J. Well, if you're having our different choices, this happens with probability 1 over R for this point, 1 over R for that point, and then over all the R different points. So probability 1 over R that they will be the same. Also assume that actually when we're doing this step, the WI plus 1, that the absolute value of this point means that we have to take the negation. So that the lexicographic smaller of the WI and minus WI happens to be the minus WI. So 1 over R chance for the first part, 50-50 chance for the second part. Well, let's see what this means. So let's do two steps ahead. Let's assume we have gotten to WI plus 2. And this WI plus 2 comes from applying the step function, this, this F, on the previous step. And mind you, well, it's using the absolute value, so it's taking the negative point here. And then, as I said, well, we're selecting the point J for the step function. These steps, if you go back to the DL4 lecture, these steps are given by multiples of P, which is the base point, and Q, which is the target of the discrete law. So there are some random choices going into the step function, and so the jth point that we're adding in the step is CJP plus DJQ. So each time that the hash of the point gives you J, this is the point you're adding. And then the assumption was also that this point was also used in doing the step from WI to WI plus 1. Okay, so let's plug this in. So we also had this WI plus 1 that came from taking the WI absolute value plus CJP plus DJQ. And do you see what the problem is? We've made one step forward. Then we were asked to negate and now we're making the same step backwards. So our WI plus 2 of the two steps, we are back to where we were before. So whenever a walk has entered this, it will just do one step forward, one step backwards, one step forward, one step backwards. This is super frustrating. If you're this little figure on this game plan, you actually want to walk on a big row or you want to walk on this uh, parallel row method where you're doing up to a distinguished point, and all you're doing is going back and forth, back and forth. And it's like nothing ever happens. You will never make it out of this. You will never reach a distinguished point. You never ever reach a collision. Well, there is a collision. You're colliding with yourself, but not in a useful way. You're colliding with yourself in a way that you don't learn anything about the discrete law. And so if this is one of your many works, it's just lost. It will do this forever. It will never reach a distinguished point. And remember the probabilities that we had. Well, this is the told you already, remember the probabilities we had, this is happening with 1 over r on the first condition, 1 over 2 on the second condition, so with probability 1 over 2 r, this can happen. For each step we have this probability, so if you're running for 2 r steps, you have a pretty high chance this is encounters. And typically our r is not that small, so till you reach a distinguished point, you are fairly likely to have entered the circle, a cycle. So, this is a problem. Um, it's also a known issue. It's I mean, here it becomes textbook because I'm showing to you in the lecture, but it's also yeah, it's not so hard to grasp. And you can imagine doing more complicated cycles. You can actually have cycles of, of larger length. For instance, you can have a cycle of length four with having the steps match up, even if there's no relation between the individual steps. Just doing the J step and then the I step versus the I minus J step, minus I step, in whichever way around, is another way of how you would get back to the point in four steps, rather than just two. Okay, it's a known issue, and so you might just say, well, it was a square root of two anyway, I, I wouldn't bother. And that's also what, what some people were doing when they're doing implementations. On the other hand, well, if you actually want to set records or just break some stuff, you do care about every single bit. So how can we get rid of these fruitless cycles? I mean, we want to have a real cycle like this one here on the, on the picture, um, but then we don't want to have something we're just going back and forth. So there are lots of papers which mention it. There are several fixes which are proposed and, well, uh, 
I put there in a small font, but I, I don't mind reading it out. Um, the summary of this is many of the proposals got it wrong. So I think they don't work or they're inefficient or both. Because you want to have that your fix is compatible with staying on this path. You want to still enter the circle. You still want to be able to, to enter there. And so that means that both walks, task walk, the slow walk, or in the distinguished point case, you need to be able to escape the cycle in a compatible way. It would be so sad if you're already on the same path, but just because you entered the cycle with a different counter or something, you then scoot there and the other one scoots there and suddenly you lost the collision. That's really bad because you're suddenly not, I mean, you're not getting the collision you were promised. So what can you do? So one obvious way is choose a big R. So if you can handle 2048 pre-computed steps, having a one over two to the three chance, that's actually started to feel a little bit comfortable. So it's not that often that you have to check for collisions. Of course, you do want to occasionally check whether you have entered a cycle, but you don't have to do it all the time. You can run for 4,000 steps and then check. Or maybe you run for 2,000 steps and then check. Also, you don't want the check to be too expensive. And most importantly, your check, your, sorry, your escape has to be compatible with the cycle structure. So no matter at which point in the cycle you entered, no matter how far you were through, your escape from the cycle when you notice it has to be deterministic. Every walk that enters the cycle has to continue at the same point afterwards. So you want to escape. And the way we choose to escape is we're taking two times a point. That's a good way of escaping, gets you somewhere totally different. But this point has to be unique per cycle. Now already with a lexicographic minimum, like the absolute value there, I was picking a notion of size. And so when you detect that you're in a cycle, well, when you want to check that you're in a cycle, you're also keeping not just the information of, hey, have I been here before, but we also keep information of what is the smallest point we have seen so far in the cycle. Now, when you've come around, then the smallest, well, first of all, you notice you back to where we were, and you know which one was the smallest that you've run through. You don't have to go there again. I mean, you remember which one was the smallest. It's a very easy comparison. You're just keeping temporarily two extra variables, one to check whether you're in a cycle, and one to have a point to escape, which is collecting the smallest point that you have seen the last x steps. Well, this point, this w bar, this is what we use to escape from the cycle. And then anybody else who's entering the same cycle will also compute the same w bar because it is the smallest value of the cycle, will escape the same way. And so these two walks will continue to walk together until they reach distinguished point, this time hopefully not running into another cycle, but else they can escape and eventually they should run into it. Uh, a distinguished point. So this is something to consider. So if you want to get the square root of two speed up, make sure that the um, check for the cycles are sufficiently frequent, that you don't waste too much on being in the cycle because it's rather frustrating for this figure to go back and forth and back and forth. Computers have have feelings too. They don't want to do useless stuff. But also you don't want to waste that time on, on bookkeeping checking for cycles, keeping the smallest and keeping track of have I been here before is also taking some time. So that's a balance to be struck and it also has to be compatible with your distinguished point feature. So you do want to hit a distinguished point eventually. Okay, so um, the consequence of all of this is you're getting most of the negation speed up, so you're getting mostly the square root of two for real at the expense of a little bit of bookkeeping. On the other hand, well, when you actually sit down and do this level of optimization, you're finding a lot of other tricks to make things fast. If you want to see full details, we wrote this up in some paper in 2011. So if you find yourself in a situation where you actually want to break some discrete log systems on a loop-to-curve and a square root of two factor matters to you, well, there you go.